Hi, I'm David Hamburger here for True Fire and the next installment of my blog on blues song and genealogy. Today we're going to talk about the song Talk to Your Daughter and we'll do it in two parts. First on acoustic to talk about what J.B. Lenoir does on his original version of this tune and then we'll switch over to electric and talk a bit about Snooks Eaglin. So let's start with J.B. Lenoir. He plays this capoed at the fifth fret and he plays with his fingers, or uh, in videos of him you can see him using a thumb pick. So um, there's some things that we'll do uh, playing this finger style. The version, uh, the original recording of it is just him with, uh, with a drummer. And at certain points he just drops out the bottom to play some top end licks. So we'll look at all of that too. But to start with, he's playing uh, out of E shapes, like he was in E only, everything's capoed up to the 5th fret, so he's really in the key of A, it sounds like A. And um, he does the basic shuffle vamp. But the thing that's very cool about it is that, um, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but a lot of times you can hear him hitting the, he hits the open 3rd string along the way, which makes for kind of a... Uh, minor or in this context it sort of implies a like a seven sharp nine chord the Hendrix chord I guess that kind of sound it's... and it's done just because he's brushing hard and this note on the fourth string is getting muted Uh, then for the A chord, he's just moving over one string and not really doing that funny extra note so much. And on the B chord, or the five chord, well, it's a B shape, um, it sounds like he's doing this, just a straight bar chord, boogie move. Uh, but a lot of, uh, of the musicians from that period uh, play this kind of thing. So um, it's, it's just something to, to, to notice when you're listening to guys who play kind of in a country blues vein, but on electric guitar or in a more modern, like 50s modern kind of context. So if you hear that, that's something that sounds kind of funky or out on the B chord, a lot of times it's that. So they'll be going E, A, and then, or even... The seventh of the chord, so it's actually theoretically okay. And once you hear it a lot, it becomes a sound that sort of makes sense. But this is a bit of a tangent because I don't think JB Lenoir is actually doing that. I think he's actually playing this. Anyway, so one time through the whole vamp sounds like this. standard kind of turn around like that coming down fifth uh, third fret and all the fret positions I'm giving are relative to the capo third fret second fret first fret open while keeping the high string going and starting it all off with the open E to a B7 that has the fifth of the chord in the bass. So this would be your standard B7, second fret on the fifth string, first fret on the third on the fourth string, second fret on the third string, open second string and second fret on the high string. But he's grabbing the fifth um, fifth degree of the scale. So with the second fret on the low string and just doing kind of a So that's the basic vamp, and then the other thing that he does that's really neat is that uh, he does uh, a little um, like a riff uh, thing with the drums as a break, and he doesn't actually follow the chord progression, he just vamps on the one, and does this 
thing where he goes. Over and over with a few variations. Um, and so basically what he's doing is he's walking back up the B string. Open B, second fret, third fret. When he gets to the third fret, he adds fourth fret on the third string. And also picks the high string. Now whether he's doing that with his thumb or thumb pick, with one finger, or with some combination, Anything's possible, uh, you know. Um, um, probably brushing with the thumb or the, with the thumb pick, but it doesn't really matter if you're going to play it. You could, I mean, you could be doing all this with the pick, basically. And so the the follow up to that part does that a couple of times, and then that's a pull off from the second to the first fret on the third string and then over to the 2nd fret on the 4th string and then a hammer on back to the 3rd string and then repeats oh, comes into it with this cool blues note 3rd fret on the 3rd string over to the open B which is real dissonant and kind of funky sounding That's the little break that he plays, and there's little variations in there of the way he phrases it, but that's basically it. And towards the end, he repeats that part a bunch. It's pretty open. Um, one other thing that he does um, when he's just vamping behind the vocals, when he's playing his backup part, which is one of those cool things you can kind of only do with your if you're playing with your fingers. So he's brushing. Uh, the, the, the boogie woogie riff, this thing, and uh, then at the top of the bar on his first downstroke with the thumb, he's pinching thumb and then open third string, and then hammering on to the first fret on the third string, and then hitting the high string. Uh, so it's a pinch and a hammer on and then a pinch low and high strings so in super slow motion it's like one and two and three and four and one and two and then you're back in right there so you gotta jump back over to your to finish up because you've, you've taken up the first beat of one and two and three and four and one and so you're coming in here to finish up the measure so that's basically what J.B. Lenoir is doing and um, you know he's the one who wrote the tune and recorded it first so it's good to go back to the source and just see exactly how that guy did what he did so now we'll switch over and check out what Snick Eaglin is doing